Hello, and welcome to the High School Equivalency and Proficiency Program Summer Convenings. Let's begin with some introductions. So first, I would like to introduce our coordinator for the convenings. Her name is Melissa Stockbridge, and she works for the Sacramento County Office of Education, known as SCOE. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, my supervisor, Don Kilmer, who works for the California Department of Education, and he is the CDE administrator. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Geetha Raman. I am the proficiency consultant for the CDE. And next, I would like to ask my colleague, Bernie, to introduce herself, please. Thank you, Geetha. My name is Bernie Holman, and I am the CDE consultant for the Equivalency Office. Welcome. So today's topics uh, that we're going to discuss are going to include uh, the California Department of Education's two different testing programs for individuals to earn their legal equivalent to a high school diploma. And these two programs are the high school proficiency and the high school equivalency. The Department of Education currently uses two vendors to deliver these exams. They are the GED testing services and PSI. Additionally, we will also cover information regarding requesting Chesapeake historical records, as well as information regarding the ordering and handling procedures for current and historical equivalency records. If you attended our summer convenings last year, this presentation is going to look a little different as our programs are evolving to better suit the needs of our test takers. We'll first focus on our two programs, the high school proficiency and the high school equivalency. Thanks, Bernie. Let's take a look at the differences between the eligibility criteria for the two programs. So who's eligible for each program? The main difference between the two is eligibility. If the individual is currently enrolled in high school or not. So a student would be eligible for the proficiency program if they're currently enrolled in high school and they have been enrolled in grade 10 for one school year or longer. And this applies to students that might be credit deficient and unable to move forward to the second semester, or the student is currently enrolled in their second semester of 10th grade, or if the student is 16 years of age. There is no state residency requirement for the proficiency program. Next, I will pass it to my colleague, Bernie, to go over the equivalent, equivalency eligibility requirements. Yes, thank you. So the person that is not currently enrolled in high school uh, is the, and would have graduated from high school had they remained and followed the usual course of study towards graduation. The age requirements for the equivalency program states a person must be 18 years or older, or at least 17 years of age and credit deficient, which is less than 100 units of credit or combined to an institution or correctional facility. This information can be found in Ed Code Section 51420. And lastly, the equivalency program does have a California residency requirement. To find acceptable proof of residency, you can use the link provided in your note-taking guide. Now, Geetha will provide an overview of the program of proficiency. Thanks, Bryn. So, let's go into a little more detail about each program. I will first begin with the proficiency program. The California High School Proficiency Exam, known as the Chess B, was a paper and pencil exam implemented in 1974 to help students that were either excelling or struggling in high school. The test was open to students 16 years of age or if they were currently enrolled in their second semester of sophomore year in high school. The students could take the test in order to demonstrate their proficiency in English language arts and mathematics. Once a student passed the exam, they could choose to exit high school with their parent or guardian's permission to begin attending higher education or to start their career. And to clarify, the CHESPE was an exam that went through several different iterations. The last exam that the CDE had been utilizing was the Stanford Achievement Test Series 10th edition, known as the SAT-10. 
and this exam has now been discontinued. Because the test has now been retired or discontinued, the CDE is partnering with the HS, <clears throat> excuse me, the HSC vendors to utilize the language arts and mathematics subtests to implement the proficiency program. The proficiency program will begin testing on the new HSC platforms this fall. In the next slide, Bertie will go over the equivalency program. So let's talk a little bit more about California's vendors. The equivalency program first appeared in 1943 as the GED and was created by American Council on Education, also known as ACE, during World War II to assist military personnel and veterans who had not completed their high school education. The GED program provided them with an opportunity to, dem to demonstrate their knowledge and skills at a level equivalent to a high school graduate. In 2014, California added the use of the HiSET test as an approved equivalency exam. In 2022, the HiSET underwent a management change from ETS to PSI. In case you didn't catch this in the previous slide, California uses two vendors to offer our equivalency tests. We feel very fortunate to have two options for California test takers because some states only have one vendor. We plan on using these vendors to administer the proficiency test. Gita will continue to speak about the proficiency program and the benefits of using the high school equivalency tests for evaluating high school proficiency. Okay, our partnership with the HSC vendors to administer the proficiency and equivalency exams creates the following benefits for our test takers. They will have access to testing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There are free, <laughs> there are free prep materials on each vendor's websites, and there are links included in your note-taking guides. The exams are aligned with College and Career Readiness Anchor Standards, and the Certificate of Proficiency is accepted by all California junior colleges, CSUs, and UCs. And the Certificate of Equivalency is accepted across the United States and internationally. In the next couple of slides, we're going to cover other valuable resources for these tests. Okay, let's talk about the Homeless and Foster Youth Fee Waiver. This is a very valuable resource open to individuals under the age of 25 that have been either a homeless or foster youth. And this means that these individuals can qualify to take the exam for free. For information on how to apply, please visit the link provided in your note-taking guides. Also, we'd like to share there is a new data collection requirement. And we'd like to share or ask, actually, of our test examiners and that when you're registering test takers or when students are registering to take the exam, that you please collect this information at the time of registration and mark if the student was a homeless or foster youth. And both vendors will be adding this field as a requirement for registration. Next, Bernie will cover testing accommodations. So testing accommodations are available for both exam programs for anyone with disabilities. There are two types of accommodations to be aware of. The accommodations that don't require pre-approval are considered universal and are available to all students. For example, the following items can be brought to the test center, tinted or colored transparent overlays, scratch paper to be collected by test center personnel at the end of the testing center, or earplugs not attached to any electronic device. Request, requested test accommodations are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis and include such things as extra testing time, extra breaks, and a separate testing room. Test takers must submit a request within the required time frame to the vendors for these accommodations and provide the appropriate documentation. Of course, this is not a complete list as there are other accommodations that students can request. For more information on how to apply for accommodations and what is required, please visit the links provided in your note-taking guide. In the next slides, we'll discuss the subtests for each of the exams. 
For the equivalency exams, each of the vendors have their subtests divided differently. GED combines the reading and writing portions into one subtest, while the high set separates the reading and writing into two separate subtests. The other three vendors, the vendor subtests are the same, mathematics, social studies, and science. Next, Geetha will cover the subtests included on the proficiency exam. Thanks, Bernie. Okay, so let's take a look at the proficiency subtests. When using the GED for the proficiency exam, there are two subtests. The first is reading and writing, which is combined into one subtest. And the second is mathematics. When using the high set for the proficiency, there are three subtests. Reading and writing are separated into two different subtests. And mathematics is the third. And that split in the high set subtest might benefit some of our students that might struggle in either reading or writing and might need to spend that specific allotted time on just one subtest. Next, we're going to go into more detail on the testing delivery modes for each exam. Okay, so what are the testing modes? Students will be able to choose a vendor and register for the particular exam that they'd like to take. Once they've registered, both vendors offer these different testing modes. Individuals can choose to take a paper and pencil test or computer-based test at a testing site. They may also choose to take the test at home on their personal computer through live proctoring. And students will need to ensure that they can test in a distraction-free environment to take the exam, as well as having a reliable internet connection. Next, I'm going to pass it to Bernie to go over scoring for these exams. So these tests have varying scoring cut scores. Uh, remember, we're using the same test, GED and HiSET, for two separate programs the proficiency and the equivalency programs. One of the differences between the two programs are the passing scores. Both vendors have college and career readiness cut scores. And in the case of the proficiency exam, the expectation is to leave high school college and career ready. Notice that the proficiency cut score is higher than the equivalency exams because these individuals are currently enrolled in high school and they need to demonstrate that they are proficient in language arts and math in order to exit high school. For the equivalency, the expectation is to demonstrate performance equal to the standard of performance expected of a high school graduate. Because of that, the proficiency exam requires a combined score of at least 165 or a score of 15 per subtests. This is uh, varies through the, this differs from the equivalency where the required co combined score of at least 145 for the GED test or a, a total of eight, a score of eight for the high set per subtest. Next, we'll talk about the options after passing the proficiency exam. Okay, once a student has passed the proficiency exam, these are the following options that are available for them. They can choose to remain enrolled in high school and take classes at the junior college, or they can exit high school with the parent or guardian's permission to begin attending higher education or to start their career. Or they can take the remaining HSC subtests to earn their HSC certificate, which opens even more doors than the proficiency exam alone. Next, we're going to talk about the California credentials. After passing the exams, the reward is getting the credential. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the two equivalency vendor credentials, current and historical, and Geetha will talk about the proficiency credentials, current and historical. The difference between the transcript and the certificate that the students earn how a student can request a copy of their credentials or place an order, and the important distinctions between the two vendors, and how to handle historical records that your site might still have in storage. I wanna to touch base on the differences between the two credentials and a passer receives. So the transcript 
has all of the test taker details and the test scores. What employers and higher institutions of education usually require to prove passing. On the other hand, the certificate is a ceremonial wall hanging without much details other than the student's name. If, if you are asked what the difference is, make sure the student is aware that the certificate only lists their name, but the transcript has the details that they will need for employers or schools. Some important tips to know so you can share with your students are when ordering high school equivalency credentials, GED and HiSET have separate ordering websites, as well as separate customer service phone numbers. And because of this, orders must be placed with the correct vendor. I have added links in your note-taking guide for each of the vendor ordering web pages, and the first step in the ordering process is to place an order with parchment. If records are not found in parchment, then the CDE can assist in further research. In search of your credentials, start by placing an order. Chesapeake passers may only request duplicate copies of documents from the CDE. Now we'll talk about in more detail the California High School Equivalency or HSC historical scores and records. Uh, as I mentioned previously, that GED has been testing students since 1943. For reference, the personal computer entered the market in 1977 and became more common in the 80s and 90s. The reason I mentioned this is that some GED scores have not yet been digitized. Yes, there are still some students looking for their historical records that have not yet been entered into parchment, and therefore an official credential is not going to be found when an order is placed. So the first place to direct a test taker is to parchment. And in that case, if the record is not found, then G CDE can uh, become involved and do more research. This topic only applies to passer records since HiSET was just added in 2014 on handling paper records. So do you have historical records at your site and would you like to free up space by giving them to, this, to the CDE? If so, records may be, your records may be the only ones in existence and if they've never been digitized or entered into the state database. If you would like to free up some space by giving them to CDE, depending on how many hard copy records you have, we may be able to take them. If you find yourself fitting this description, please contact our office. And we provided our office email address in the note-taking guide, and that's the best place to start by contacting us. Okay, so let's take a look at Chesby historical records. Since the SAT 10 has now been retired, and we're shifting towards utilizing the HSC subtests, to administer the proficiency exam, the records from the SAT-10 era are now considered our historical records for CHESPE. CDE is now responsible for processing transcript and certificate orders for CHESPE historical records. When requesting duplicate credentials, students should be prepared to provide your name at the time of testing, date of birth, and the approximate year and location of testing. More information on how to do this is provided in your note-taking guides. You have our contact information in the note-taking guide, so feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. And thank you for taking the time to watch our informational video. Thank you.